Welcome again. I am Brian Lee Durfee, author of The Forgetting Moon, published by Simon & Schuster Saga Press. Today, I'm going to be doing a review that I have been looking forward to for a very long time. I am excited about today's book review. Classic fantasy, folks. Classic fantasy. We're going way back. We're going into the way back 1985 hot tub time machine to some great fantasy that was written in the 70s and 80s, 90s, gosh, even in the 2000s. This series that I'm going to talk about blew my mind as a kid, and it continued on for a lot of years. And a lot of you are going to be familiar with it, and some of you won't be. It's Thieves World. Let me talk about this series, okay? It's written by a lot of different authors. It's a collaboration. What happened was we had a group of authors, famous authors, at a convention like a Comic-Con back in the late 1970s, and they were talking about some of their favorite fantasy novels. And they were like, hey, you know, we like Elric, we like Conan, we like Fafard and the Grey Mouser, we like all of these great fantasy novels. What if we could do a mashup of all those characters? What if we could, I mean, what if, uh, what if, you know, Conan the Barbarian was pissed off and he's just out minding his own business and Fafard and the Grey Mouser just did one of their famous thieving heists and they round the corner and they run into a pissed off Conan the Bar Barbarian. What would happen? What would happen if Elric came upon Conan the Barbarian, and they had to duke it out. You know, the possibilities are endless. They're like, man, these would be some great stories if we could do mashups. Well, they know they couldn't take all those characters and do mashups because those characters did not belong to them. So what they did, they decided to invent Thieves' World, a series of books all short stories, all written by a lot of famous fantasy authors from the 70s and 80s. And they would share the same world. They would create their own cool characters in the world, write their own short stories about their own characters, and they would tie it all together in the same world. And the other authors could also use anybody else's character in their story. They get to create their main character, but they get to use everybody else's character too. The only rule was don't kill off someone else's character. Everything else is fair game. And they did it. They pulled it off. They got a publisher. Ace Books published it. Thieves World right here was the first one in the series. In fact, if you look, this was the original Thieves World cover. One of the reasons I sort of I usually do a little bit more of a close-up. I kind of set the camera back a little bit just because I wanted to get all of my Thieves World collection in the shot. <laughs> That's how excited I was for this video because I loved Thieves World. Let me tell you, the first fantasy novel I ever read was Sword of Shannara. I've gone over that in other videos. Then I read The Lord of the Rings. Then I read Lord Lloyd Alexander's, you know, Black Cauldron and Turan series. Chronicles of Gwynead. And for me, that's all the, that's the only fantasy I knew, you know, growing up in Sevier County, Utah, middle of the desert. There wasn't a lot of fantasy. I mean, the, the libraries didn't have it. So then I just kind of bounced to, to a lot of Western Louis L'Amour novels. I just, I didn't know a lot about fantasy. And then I took a trip to uh, Salt Lake to the mall and I went into the bookstore and I got me some new fantasy writers to read. I got me some Raymond Feist, magician. I got me some David Eddings' Bulgariad, and I also got me some Thieves' World. Because I was like, I looked at this cover right here. Now, don't these guys just look badass? I mean, if you see this on a book cover, doesn't that just look gritty? Doesn't that just look like a bar full of ruffians that you want to read about? I thought so anyway. I thought it was great. So I picked up the first Thieves' World book, 
which had that cover on it. They redid the covers. I've got the whole set of Gary Rodell covers. Um, but there's also a much more rare set with covers by this artist. Uh, I bought these and collected them as I was a kid growing up. So I have all of these books and all of the tie-in novels and all of the games. I'll be honest with you. They're hard to find now. They're, they're out of print. I mean, they're just out of print. Doesn't matter. Go on eBay. Find everything you can about this series because it's awesome. I'm going to list some of the authors that were part of this series. And you're going to be like, holy cow, I got to go get these books. I'm going to list some of the characters. I'm going to list... I'm going to talk about this and gush about this like no other series that I have done up to this point. That's how jazzed I was to do this video. I love Thieves World. I forgot what I was talking about. Uh, buying the books, yeah. Go on, to, go on to eBay, look for Thieves World books, see if you can get the whole collection. Let me tell you how this breaks down. And then we will get into some of the minutia of the story itself and some of the plot and some of the characters, some of the writers that did it. But let me break it down. 1978, I believe, was when the first Thieves World book came out. Maybe 1980. Can't remember. But it was Thieves World. And every year, for 12 years, they put out another Thieves World novel. And these are them. All 12 of them. Some of the titles are Thieves World, Tales from the Vulgar Unicorn, Shadows of Sanctuary, Face of Chaos, Blood Ties, Soul of the City. Those first 12 books were the essence of Thieves' World. And they went and for 12 years they put them out, one a year. These authors, all of them writing a story in this fictional land with all their characters. And it was awesome. It was awesome. Then we started to get tie-in novels. Where some of the authors were like, I want to do an entire novel about my character. And that's when we started to get, you know, Shadow Spawn. We started to get the Tempest novels by Janet Morris. We started, you know, and then the series continued into the late 90s. And they, and they kept going. They kept going through the late 90s and the 2000s with these tie-in novels, the games. And then another set of short story collections just goes on and on and on. And they're thinking of reopening the series and having more fantasy writers doing it. And I'm telling you, I'm a fantasy writer. And I, at this moment, called dibs on a slot because I want to be part of the Thieves' World universe. I do not do short stories, folks. I've never written a short story in my life. But I'm telling you, by God, I would write a Thieves' World short story in a heartbeat. Because that's, that's how much I love this. And what I was talking about earlier was I was a kid. I Sword of Shannara, Lord of the Rings, Lloyd Alexander, Raymond Feist, David Eddings. That's all I was reading. And then I got to Thieves' World. Everything I had read to that point was rated PG. Thieves' World, and I was a kid when I started Thieves' World, Thieves' World, there were parts of it that were hard, hard rated R stuff. And man, I was like, man, this is like watching Conan the Barbarian without my parents even knowing I'm watching it. This is like watching the Beastmaster. All of these were rated R movies when I was a kid that I was not allowed to watch. But Thieves' World, I just got to read. I got to read. All the cool fantasy stuff that was for adults. That's why I think that's why I think it uh, meant so much to me as a kid, because it seemed like the very first adult stuff that I was exposing myself to, and I loved it. I loved it. Let me now tell you what Thieves' World is about. I told you about the authors getting together, creating their own characters, writing stories in this universe, using each other's characters. And all mayhem and hell breaks loose. I'm telling you. These stories are awesome. And Robert Asprin was the guy who started this. And he edited all these books and he compiled all the stories. And he made sure that they all tied together in a cohesive way 
so that you could read every one of these short stories from start to finish in the book. And it, and it, in e, though each one was written by a different author, it felt like you were reading a novel about all these characters in Thieves' World. And that's what it was. Thieves' World was a town of crooks and thieves and ne'er-do-wells, bad people, all the criminals of the fantasy land lived in a town called Sanctuary, nicknamed Thieves World. And in Sanctuary, let's talk about some of the characters, and then I'll get to some of the writers that wrote in this last. So, who, do, who lived in Thieves World? Who were the people that lived in Thieves World? Who were the characters that these writers created and populated Sanctuary with? And just to give you a general idea of what Sanctuary was like, it was at the southern border coastline of a, I would call it maybe a Mediterranean, Greek, southern Italy type of a setting where the weather can get very hot. You know, where the gladiator pits will roar with enthusiastic crowds where, you know, people are slinking around through back alleys, up into castles, into noblemen's houses, into dank, dark saloons. I mean, it had everything. I mean, it had everything. And some of these characters, let me give you, let me run down some of the characters that I remember. I mean, in Sanctuary, the favorite character of everybody, bar none, was the thief slash assassin Hans Shadowspawn. And I'll tell you, once I go through these, if I, as I go through the list of these names of these characters, and if you've read The Forgetting Moon and The Blackest Heart and other books I've read in, in my fantasy series, you're going to see I stole, not stole, borrowed, changed, morphed some of these Thieves World character names and kind of snuck them in in a little bit different context to my books. Hans Shadowspawn, the thief slash assassin, everyone's favorite character in Thieves World. That's him right there in the center. Badass assassin. The, one of the most badass assassins ever created in fantasy fiction. Everybody loved Hans Shadowspawn. Now, in my book, to honor my love for Thieves World, I named one of my assassins Hans Rake. After my main man, Hans Shadowspawn. Who else lives in Thieves World? What other characters were created for this wonderful town of Sanctuary where everybody's a thief and everybody's up to no good? Well, there's Cap'n Vera, the minstrel. I have a character named Culpa Barra. I took that from Cap'n Vera. Culpa Barra, Cap'n Vera. I'll be straight up with you. I'm doing, I'm doing the series honor here, folks. I mean, the names are completely different, but similar sounding because I loved the minstrel Cap'n Vera in Thieves' World. We've got Dubrow the blacksmith, Enos Yorl the wizard, Hakim the storyteller, Ishade the Necromancer. I mean, we got all kinds of... These guys came up with all sorts of characters to populate Sanctuary, Thieves' World. Jamie the Red. You know, gotta have a Viking. Gotta have a Viking. Jarvina the Scribe. Jubal the Gladiator. Another one of my favorite guys. Jubal the Gladiator. I have a character named Jubal Brook. He's a baron in The Forgetting Moon and The Blackest Heart. I pulled Jubal right out of Thieves' World. I liked the name. I liked it. I wanted to do Thieves' World some honor. Catechithis. He's kind of the governor of Sanctuary. He's like the leader. He's like the lawman. He's like the guy that sends out his sort of guard to police Sanctuary. And Sanctuary can't be policed. And some of his guards are badass. So Catechithis, I liked him too. And I liked his guards and all the people that he sent out. Uh, you know, Kurd, 
the vivisectionist. Lythandi, the blue wizard. Got a star on the forehead. Forward thinking character, not gender specific. Is it a guy? Is Lythandi a guy? Is it a girl? I like that one. There's, there's Murtis, the brothel owner. Yeah, you gotta got have a brothel in Sanctuary. If, if you got Thieves World, if you're living in a place called Thieves World, you have to have a brothel. There's no two ways about it. One Thumb, the bartender at the Vulgar Unicorn, which is the saloon where all the badass thieves hang out, do all their dirty work and scheme all their schemes. A lot of shit went down in the Vulgar Unicorn. A lot of shit. In fact, these guys are sitting in the vulgar unicorn right now. You can even see a vulgar unicorn hanging on the wall. Unicorns are vulgar. You know, there's the sacred band of mercenaries that roam through. There's Temp oh, one of my favorite characters, Tempest the Warrior. In fact, Janet Morris, one of the one of the fantasy writers. She took Tempest the Warrior and did a whole trilogy here just based off of Tempest. You know, Andrew J. Offit, he did a standalone novel that I showed you earlier right here, right there, of Shadow Spawn. You know, Hans Shadow Spawn, my favorite assassin. David Drake, his novel's right there. He also did a standalone novel set in the series. Thieves World, man. And then they did, and TSR, Dungeons and Dragons, they did a Thieves World whole, you know, like the Forgotten Realms and Dragonlance. TSR, the makers of Dungeons and Dragons, they did a whole Thieves World gaming system. I used to play it by myself in my house. <laughs> I, I lived in Sevier County, Utah. There was nobody, nobody down there. Sevier County, Utah sounds about like, I mean, it looks about like it sounds. It's been the middle of the desert. I mean, there was nobody out there. I mean, we lived on a farmhouse in the middle of the sagebrush. And I was sitting in there just as a kid with these Thieves World novels and this Thieves World game, you know, a role-playing game. I was just playing all the characters myself. I was having all my adventures. My little sister, she wanted to play with me once in a while. But, you know, I, who wants to play with their little sister uh, in Dungeons & Dragons and Thieves World? Nah, man, I kicked her out. I was happy to just do it by myself, you know. I was happy to just be in the Thieves World world by myself, pretending to be Hans Shadowspawn and Jubal the Gladiator and Tempest the Warrior. And I loved it, man. I, this, this series, like I said, I was excited to finally do a classic fantasy series. And I, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a lot of the classic 70s and 80s fantasies that I collected as a kid. And I'm gonna do video reviews of them all. And a lot of these things you ain't gonna have ever heard of. And, but I don't care. I'm gonna do the review. A lot of these things you won't even be able to buy anymore because they're out of print unless you go onto eBay, get somebody's ratty old smoke smelling copy if you'd like. Hey man, I bought them all and I collected them all as a kid. I'm glad I got the whole series still in mint condition. I'm so happy. I'm so happy right now. This is my favorite video I've ever made. My Thieves World video. I am stoked. I am jazzed. Now let me tell you about some of the authors that took part in this. Now at the time, now for some of you younger fantasy fans, you might not recognize any of these names. But during the 70s and 80s, these were big name people. And it starts with Robert Asprin, the guy who edited all of these books. Some of you might be familiar with Robert Asprin because he wrote The Myth Adventures, sort of like a Terry Pratchett. He was Terry Pratchett before Terry Pratchett came along. Um, let's talk about that, but there was Lynn Abbey, Paul Anderson, classic science fiction writer, Andrew J. Offit, the creator of Hans Shadow Spawn, everyone's favorite assassin. There's Marion Zimmer Bradley. Everybody knows her from the Mists of Avalon. Philip Jose Farmer, another classic science fiction writer. C.J. Cherry. I mean, you can't get a bigger sci-fi name back then or even today than C.J. Cherry. Now, C.J. Cherry said, you know, one of the things she said when she was writing in Thieves' World, she's like, yeah, I wrote my first story in, in the original Thieves' World for fun and for the paycheck. 
But then all the other authors kind of screwed around with my character. And so I wrote every other story to get revenge on those other authors. Because I was going to fuck with their characters now. Because they fucked with mine. And that's one of the great things about Thieves World. Is these people, these writers, you know, their characters would go through hell in the hands of everybody else. And then they'd have to exact their revenge on everybody else's character, right? I think they started killing each other's characters off and pissing each other off. Whole thing ended in a big fight. I don't know. I'd like to think that's the way it ends. I'd like to think that they would resurrect this series and have me as part of it. And we could have some of the other fantasy writers that are in the bookstores today be a part of it. I think it would go over like a fantastic thing because Thieves World, like I said, rated R, R rated. Man, it was the beginning of Grimdark. If you like Grimdark, Thieves World put Grimdark on the map. Let's talk about some of the other authors. Famous back then, Diana L. Paxson, Janet Morris, David Drake, still writing today, still, still plugging along great books today. Diane Duane, Mickey Zucker Reichert. Hey, she does some great stuff still. Stephen Brust. Oh, I'm going to do several videos of classic fantasy just about Stephen Brust and his Vladimir Talto series. Raymond Feist. He took part in this. Raymond Feist, man. Everybody knows him. Jody Lynn Nye. Dennis L. McKiernan. I mean, these are badass authors. And I just named a few. There's a ton more that I can't think of right now that did that took a part in this. A ton more. And I can't remember. Should have written them down. And I don't prepare for any of this. Like I said, the quality of these videos is just astonishing. I mean, I dress in my best outfits. Anyway. Thieves World, I hope you get the picture, folks. I hope you get the picture that this Thieves World stuff is awesome. And if you can find it on eBay, or if they've got eBooks out there, get them. You will love them. If you love the modern day grim dark movement, you gotta read these because these started it. These started it. I mean, these guys created their characters and then they took all the other authors characters and put them through some brutal stories brutal stories and it's great it's great bloody fun is what thieves world is i can't recommend it enough go out and get the very first book that is simply titled thieves world just get it and try it and see if you don't like it and then once you like it and love it go get the other 12 and then the other 20, and on and on and on, because it's fantastic. What's my rating? Let's go, the whole compilation, let's go, since everything is tied, I'm gonna rate the whole shebang 10 out of 10. 10 out of 10. 